Hi, this is Fabian from TechStage. I have to make this video, uh, this interview in English. I hope every, uh, it's okay for you guys. And I have uh, right next to me Nick Stam. Yes. Hi, Nick. Good How to are meet you, you, Fabian? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Nick, you have launched um, two days before the Tegra 4 chip. Correct. Correct. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Obviously, it's our next generation Tegra, and we're really proud of it. And um, we announced that it will be in our Project Shield device. And it will also be in a number of other devices, which we're not making major announcements today with our partners. But we will have Tegra 4 in a whole bunch of devices, and it's much more powerful, of course, than Tegra 3. So we have 72 graphics cores compared to 12 in Tegra 3. So six times more powerful shader architecture, all right, which would translate to probably 3 to 4x in actual delivered graphics performance. Um, we have a new Cortex A15 chips quad core first in the world with quad core A15. We also have a fifth power saver core, okay, like we had in Tegra 3, to take care of those more uh, low performance tasks to save battery life so it can switch seamlessly between the quad cores, either one, two, three, or four of those quad cores active at a time based on the workload, and switch between the lower power, lower megahertz, uh, um, power saver core, so you really get the best balance um, for power savings and performance. So we're really thrilled about that. Um, you'll see Tegra 4 performing also some really, really cool HDR, uh, we call it computational photography. So you'll be able to take image pictures like you've never seen before with the crazy lighting, you know, the bright backlight backgrounds and dark and the pictures never show up right, you know, the people are really, really dark and the backgrounds really bright, whatever. We can now take multiple images really quickly with computational photography uses the ISP, the image signal processor, plus the graphics cores, plus the CPU cores, and we can provide incredible imagery. So we're really excited about HDR, both, both uh, still and video. Okay, so HDR photography is going to be made really to the next level with Tegra 4. That sounds perfect. Um, in terms of uh, the vertex sh uh, shaders and, yes. uh, and pixel shaders, how many do you have in the Tegra 4? Sure, so we have, um, there's 72 total, so there's 48 pixel and 24 vertex. So they're separate still. We did not go with a unified architecture right now at this generation because we didn't think it makes sense right now at 28 nanometer for power conservation. It's because unified cores are sort of bigger and more complex, they take more power. So even though they have advantages to be able to balance workloads, it, in terms of this architecture at this point in time in mobile, it's more power efficient to actually have the separate shader cores, the vertex and pixel, like we used to have in GeForce, you know, back some, some years back. Okay. So uh, it's it's the same architecture like the Tegra 3? Yeah, it's similar architecture to Tegra 3 in the sense that we've got the separate vertex and pixel, but there's lots of optimizations, more caches, uh, larger caches, more pipeline optimizations to make the processor not only be more cores, but also more efficient and faster, just internal design. How many texture units do you have in the Tegra 4? Um, so we don't really go into that level of detail, but we have uh, texture units, we have, I can tell you we have like, we, we, the way it's broken out, we don't have like vertex, pixel, uh, ROPs, all that sort of like structured like we do in GeForce. The ROPs are kind of folded into the pixel shaders. But um, we have basically four pixels out. So uh, PPC, you know, color pixels. So you're effectively like four ROPs coming out. And texture units, um, I don't think we're disclosing. That's why I'm hedging right now. So I, I, you're my first interview, so I don't want to okay, say right. sorry. I don't, but I don't believe it's on our list of disclosing at the moment. Okay. Um, in terms of TDP, can you t uh, tell us uh, about a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, let's put it this way. It will be in regular workloads more efficient power-wise than Tegra 3. Now, of course, if you lit up all the cores, turn everything on, it, remember it's 28 nanometer versus 40 nanometer of Tegra 3 also, so there's a benefit there, naturally. But if you turn on all the cores, you'll be likely closer to Tegra 3 power consumption. But in general use, Tegra 4 is more power efficient than Tegra 3. So we don't give out, again, I'm evading your question, <laughs> but we don't give out true TDP at this point, okay? Okay. Um, ne but nevertheless, I mean, can you... We're, of course, you know, 
four, five, six watt type of uh, design when you're running the chip. But we don't, again, give out specific. But uh, exactly, uh, will there be probably two different versions of Tegra 4? One for, tablet, uh, one for tablets and one for, uh, for smartphones? Yeah. Most likely you'll see the same kind of splits that we had for Tegra 3. And you know, different types of packages, you'll see like the pop, the package on package, you'll see stacked packages, you'll see packages with a memory on the side for tablets where you've got more real estate versus the phone where you've got to be more compact. So yeah, you'll see different package designs and different um, models for sure with different types of products. When do you think we will see the first um, really Tegra 4 models in the market? Um, so, again, no specifics, but uh, I know that we'll see our uh, Project Shield, which will likely be coinciding with other devices, though we don't know what the exact timing will be, in the Q2. In Q2. In Q2. And will be, uh, so far, um, be Project Shield the only one with a 72 um, Shader architecture, or will, the, uh, will there be other ones as well in Q2? Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Other products will use the 72 shader. You know, oh, yeah. we'll, okay. we'll use Tegra 4 as we know it to be in in, uh, in Project Shield. Yes. Okay. Um, can you talk a bit, little bit about the data transfer rate w uh, in uh, in oh. the Tegra 4? Um, so we have dual channel memory now, okay, in this architecture. And again, we didn't have it in Tegra 3 because we felt at the time it wasn't power efficient to have it a dual channel. And there's trade-offs, of course, with power and performance. So now we do. Um, and I'd have to give out megahertz rates to do the data rates, and we're not just doing that at, okay. at that level of detail. We're not, not giving out GPU per, uh, megahertz yet. We're not giving out raw data rates yet. When do you think, will you disclose all this data? Probably as we get closer to real products uh, being launched in the market. You know, once we get Q2 and products start coming out, I think we'll get more, more information, more specifics, because then we'll actually know you know what exact megahertz is we're going to be running at because we're, we can still tune, we're still in the kind of tuning it stage right now. Do you think there is still an issue with Tegra 4 because you didn't uh, disclose any uh, graphic benchmarks this time and it was kind of surprising? Um, we didn't put them on stage. I don't remember what what they put up on stage. No, no, no. We were just showing uh, the websites, the the loading, uh, the fast, how yeah. fast they load yeah, websites, yeah, yeah. but there were no gra graphic benchmarks, uh, benchmarks yeah, yeah, at all. So that's probably the same reason. Um, but graphic. Graphics-wise, it rocks against any existing products. Um, and even some of the annou recently announced products we've heard from our competitors, we believe we're still going to win in the graphics side. I, I've seen a, um, today, I've, I've seen a leak f with benchmarks, the uh, Tegra 4 against the, the GPU of, uh, of the iPad 4, and it was the iPad 4 won. So um, do you think there is an issue? Um, again, too early to tell. I didn't see that leak. And whatever was benchmarked is way too early to be benchmarked. Software stacks aren't tuned fully yet. So we're, you know, while it's announced here, obviously we can show Project Shield and all, the products aren't shipping yet. So I wouldn't uh, stand by any of those numbers at the moment. Okay, and, and you know, in the iPad, they do have uh, a lot of graphics cores and they take a lot of real estate, okay, on the chip for graphics. Uh, the downside of the Apple uh, graphics is that the software stacks and the games are not so amazing. Okay, so the big, so the other big thing about NVIDIA is our software and our, our drivers and our ability to tune and develop graphics algorithms to help the game developers build much cooler looking content. So that's really, really critical to NVIDIA's Tegra story. It's the software side. And none of the competitors, you know, name, name your competitor, aren't close to us there. I hope it stays that way. <laughs> so you're still confident that you will uh, beat the iPad 4 at the end? Um, in the end, and certainly with better looking content, with more games that are cool, with all the cool effects that you love to see in, in GeForce type products, and you're going to see more and more of that coming down into this space. On smartphones and on tablets? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, 72 cores, we're getting up to some reasonable horsepower. Remember, these chips are tiny little <laughs> things and take very little power, and we're doing great, uh, great, great looking uh, graphics. So. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It was kind of really amazing what we saw uh, on, um, on your presentation. Uh, talking about Shield very fast, when will Shield come into the market? So right now we're, we're giving just a general Q2. 
okay? So as the other night you saw it working, it's doing really cool stuff. So not only Android games that you can play on it from the markets, Android market uh, play, Google Play, but you can also stream from the PC your PC content, your PC games. And it uses our GFE or GeForce Experience technology to tune the game delivery to the device so it looks really good on the device. So and it, you can also control your TV as a controller with a PC streaming to the TV and now you can use the Project Shield as a game controller, which is kind of cool. So there's like three or four different use cases that makes it very unique. So you can carry your, your PC games around on this little device as well as, or you know, stream as well as play your Android games. So it's really, really, we think, unique, and I think people are going to love it. What, what price tag will it have, approximately? We didn't hear anything about that. We didn't hear pricing yet, and, you know, I'll ask you, what do you think it should be priced, right? I mean, that's, seriously, we don't have it uh, mapped out for pricing yet. We will get that information to you when we get it, but, you know... I mean, you, you were saying that you, you, you think that there will be a couple of shields in every household, so it can be, the price tag can be too high, right? Well, if that's what you said, I, I did, did, did we say that? Yeah. Okay. Your CEO. You know, yeah, my CEO said that, and I was busy working on other things <laughs> at, at the time. I, remember, I was DJing the event that <laughs> okay. afterwards, so I was up on stage getting my DJ set ready. Now, I, it, Jensen may have said that, and he's probably right that people will, will love this. Well, certainly, if you have multiple people in the house, you want to have multiple shields. So I agree with him. I agree with Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> So it won't be too too expensive, you think? Yeah, okay, probably a price take about two hundred dollars. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it, I'm sure it won't be you know too much. And it, but the thing that I want to be clear about is not a subsidized model. So you know you're playing free Android games on this. It's not like we're selling the hardware dirt cheap, and then you know it's subsidized by the software sales. This is a hardware product that you buy you know, without subsidies. And that's the business model, right? Business model is exactly that. Because we're playing basically free or $1.99 or $2.99 games, so there's no real subsidies that'll be coming from that. Um, talking about grid very fast, can you probably say uh, when we will see the first services? Um, we're working with a number of partners at the moment, okay, but we don't have anything to announce firmly right now. But there's a lot of excitement, a lot of interest, because it's very unique and new to have all this GPU horsepower in the server rooms now and be able to virtualize the GPU, have these grid servers plug into the big racks, okay? And have multiple users using each GPU as well as, you know, there's multiple GPUs in each uh, 1U or 2U form factor. And the fact of the matter is, you're going to have, I think, I forget, like 720 concurrent users could use one of the main Uh, sets of racks. There, all those specs, I think, are on our website, and I don't have them off the top of my head because I'm not the grid guy, but regardless, I think it's really cool. Streaming, great-looking graphics at low latency, okay, from big server farms. So it's another business model. It's another way to game, and we think users, again, will have more flexibility. They can be anywhere in the world, tie into the cloud, and do their gaming. It's, it's neat stuff. Do you think we will see something in Q2 as well here? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's coming soon, but uh, I would point you to Andrew Fear, who can probably answer those questions better than I can. Thank you very much, uh, Nick, for your time. It was pretty interesting, and I wish you good luck for everything, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Raven. Nice talking to you, man. Thank you. All right, see you. <laughs> okay. That's good.